seemed impossible. I thought it would never happen, but I'm finally on vacation. I've been working like crazy for months and months and months. And this vacation that my wife and I planned on January 1st has finally come. And we are officially on Vancouver Island on the west coast of Canada. We're actually in about day six or seven of the vacation. We spent a couple of days inland at Cultus Lake with some family. I didn't do much filming, but I did get the drone up and I took some photos on the water, which was really nice. And then after we were done at Cultus Lake, we hopped on the ferry, came over to the island. I am unbelievably excited. It's funny though, when you're on vacation and you're a content creator trying to kind of decide where the balance is of like enjoying the vacation as it is, or trying to get content out of it. We wanted me to be filming some of this so that we have it as a bit of a keepsake. So. I don't really know what this whole video is gonna look like, but you're gonna get somewhat of a glimpse into my 2019 vacation. About eight years ago, just after we got married, we drove down to Seattle and on the way back, we took the ferry across to Victoria, immediately fell in love with Vancouver Island. I don't know, there's such a, a magic about the place and Megan absolutely loves the ocean. Every chance that we get, we've been trying to come back to the island, but every time we've only gone to Victoria. And so this time we decided to after we hopped off the ferry, kind of explore the island. Right now we're waiting for another ferry to head over to Seisachan Island, AKA Newcastle Island. And we're just gonna wander around over there and see what it's all about. It's a small island just off of the Eastern coast, right off of Nanaimo. Every time you get close to me, yeah. Got me high, don't know why. I'm thinking about you differently. We're on a trail now called Shoreline Trail on the island. It's supposed to be about a two hour kind of walk slash hike. We always joke around that with my video and photo stuff, it's probably going to take an extra hour. So we're expecting it to be about a three hour walk. And actually, now that I think about it, a lot of you probably haven't met my wife unless you've been watching my channel for like two years. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my wife, Megan. Hello, YouTube. bit of context. We live in a province called Alberta, which is in the prairies. There's some mountains if you go south, but we live in northern Alberta, so it's pretty flat and there's not a whole lot of water other than the lakes that we have. So coming out to the ocean is kind of a big deal for us. It's all completely new, something that we don't get to see every day. So this is pretty incredible to come out here, just experience the ocean and the different wildlife and the trees are even different than what we're used to. It's just fun to explore and see things that you're not familiar with. So we're nearly at the end of this hike. We're both definitely at the point where we're done with this hike. It was beautiful. We only got lost once or twice. And then we're gonna be saying goodbye to Nanaimo. It was a wonderful couple of days. We're gonna be on the road to Port Renfrew. So if anyone needs us for the next four days, just don't bother. We're going to be right here. <laughs>
originally when I said that we were just gonna sit around at the cabin. I was joking, but three days later, we're finally leaving the cabin and we're on a trail called Botanical Beach Loop. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Botanical. I keep saying it Botanical, but Megan likes to say it Botanical. <laughs> Butt. She says butt tanical. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> You're a butt tanical. Apparently, I'm a butt tanical. <laughs> The walk that we're currently on in a couple of hours this is all actually going to be submerged in water when the tide comes up so it's cool because we get to see all these little tidal pools and all the little sea creatures and stuff that hide in them when the tide is low all sorts of little shells and mussels or i don't know what they all are but they're pretty cool Renfrew has been a perfect little slice of heaven for us for the past bunch of days. It was perfect placement on the trip too, to put it kind of right in the middle. We're the kind of people who are always busy in our regular lives, day to day, hour to hour, there's always something going on. And we treated the first little bit of this trip like that as well, trying to get in as much as we could. But out here, it's just silence most of the time and it's no cell reception so you're not connected to the rest of the world and you just really relax as much as possible we did get that one little adventure in but for the most part we kind of hung out at this cabin and we cooked on the barbecue and we just chilled and that never happens for us so it was perfect now we're ready to get back on the road head down to the place that started it all victoria just got to our place in downtown Victoria and I'm super excited. This place is tiny, but the location is amazing. And the actual place itself is really nice too. But as I do a pan around here, you might notice something a bit weird. There's no bed anywhere. It's because it's hiding right in there behind me. Never had a Murphy bed before. Very excited about that. We made out great at the Sydney Night Market and uh, we're gonna try something a little new on this channel. Megan's going to do a haul video for us. So uh, take it over, Megan. Hello, YouTube. So the first thing we got was um, four cotton mesh produce bags. So this is the variety pack. So we've got uh, reusable bags for our produce and our bulk items. A necklace, it's actually the exact same necklace that I have here, but in gold for my bestie some local go bind farms blackberry jam two-thirds the sugar we got some gluten-free homemade toasted sesame bread for our jams what about the tarts i ate those we found some gluten-free tarts Dana had uh rubberry rubberry strawberry mm -hmm. Dana had strawberry rhubarb and i had um lemon raspberry good day Thank you, Megan. Leave a comment below and let me know if you want Megan to do more haul videos from our farmer's market trips. It's currently 5.30 in the morning. We thought we would get up and try and catch the sunrise at the ocean. I don't think we're going to see the sun much, but we're going to head down and have a have a coffee and a tea and relax by the ocean, chill out while uh, maybe this fog clears.
Victoria has a very special place in my heart. The first time I was ever here, I was on tour with a band that I was playing in at the time and just absolutely fell in love with the vibe of this city. It's a relatively small city. There's about 80,000 people here, I think. I grew up in a smaller city with only about 20,000 people at the time. And ever since then, I've been moving into these bigger cities, moving to London, Ontario, and then Edmonton, which has about a million. So there's something about coming back to a place that has a little bit of a smaller population that just feels like home to me. And then on top of that, because it's a tourist destination, you kind of have all this extra excitement and all these extra amenities that you might not have in a normal small town or city. When Megan and I went on our honeymoon, we drove down to Seattle and I insisted that we stop in Victoria on our way back. And sure enough, it was the highlight of the entire trip. We fell in love with the city and we've been trying to come back every time that we possibly can. We came back last year and had an amazing time. We flew in, we had no vehicle, and we just walked around for like six days. We found some places that we really loved and that actually made it a little bit difficult this time because you wanna go back and visit those places again and relive those moments, but you also want to go and find the new places and explore the city even more. Last year for the first time we both got tattoos while we were on vacation and so we thought we would make that a little bit of a tradition and both got tattoos again this year. We got our couple little restaurants and stuff that we really like and we found a new place called The Drake this year that we ended up going to I think three times because we liked it so much. There's a place called Beacon Hill Park that we love to visit. There's a lot of really cool scenery and a lot of really cool flowers and plants and trees and those kinds of things to go see down there. One of the traditions that we started last year is taking a water taxi down to Fisherman's Wharf. The water taxi is part of the enjoyment for us, but Fisherman's Wharf itself is a place where there are these like houses that are on the water and you can go check them out and they're super quirky and fun and then there's also all these shops and food places and we go down there for this one place that does gluten-free fish and chips really well because uh, Megan can have it and then there's also the Buchart Gardens which are insanely beautiful they've got all sorts of different kinds of flowers and plants and all that kind of stuff you get this guide so you can go through it it's just absolutely insane how much stuff is there my personal favorite is the Jack Japanese garden uh, and we also go on this little boat tour that takes you through kind of the close area and shows you some of the wildlife that's going on there. We saw some jellyfish. Last year we saw otters. We didn't get to see them this year but uh, it was still an amazing time and unfortunately it's our last day here. We're just getting ready to head out and go to the ferry to catch back to the mainland. It's really hard to leave this place and I do think that someday eventually we'll end up living out here. So we had a few complications on our way out of Victoria. We missed our first ferry, uh, which was very frustrating, but we made it. We got on the ferry. It was a rough morning. And like I said, it was, it was very emotional to have to leave the island. Uh, we both feel very at home there. But now we're currently in a place called Mara Lake. The drive home from Victoria to Edmonton is probably about 14 or 15 hours with an hour and a half ferry in there. So we've split it up into a couple of smaller lakes and it is insanely beautiful out here. We went to the beach yesterday. We're walking around all over the place, just hanging out at the end of this dock, dipping our feet in the water, that kind of thing. And today kind of feels like the last day of the trip. This trip has been really interesting. This is the longest break that either of us have ever taken, I think. Three weeks for a vacation, I'm finding out is a really long time and that has its kind of pros and cons to it. It's hard to be away from that busy lifestyle for so long. It's hard to learn to turn off your, your need to get things done all the time, especially in a place like this where there's not a whole lot to do. It's not very obvious what you should be doing. We were talking yesterday as well about the fact that it's been a road trip, which also makes it really interesting because you kind of feel like you're losing time. 
Overall, I've had a wonderful time on the trip. There's nothing I'd rather do than spend a whole bunch of time with Megan. We work really hard when we're at home, and so we don't get to spend a lot of time together. It's really cool to connect in all these different situations too, kind of outside of your regular patterns and help each other and those kinds of things. I couldn't have asked for a better traveling partner. And basically, I can't wait to do it again. And now I think it's time to end this thing how we started it.